1170, The Answer. Welcome back. Welcome back. You are listening to Whistle Wednesdays here on AM 1170. The Answer joined as always by Mr. Jason Hall with Team Home Loans. Before the break, we were talking with James Cassidy, State Farm Insurance. If you want to get connected one, with one of these guys, give us a call. Shoot us a text, 619-663-SELL, 619-663-7355. Also in studio, I got Nathan Craig, 3C Insurance Services. So, Nathan, last night, Trump and a, is ready to do away with Obamacare. I know it was a big part of his campaign running. Where are things at with that? And where do you kind of see yeah. things headed? Yeah, you know, this is, um, it's a funny time because we spent the last, uh, uh, the day, uh, the same year I got in the industry is when Obamacare passed. So I've been in this world of change from day one. I don't know anything but this, you know, and so uh, it's given me opportunity. It's been, anytime there's chaos, there's opportunity. And so I'm thankful in a sense that the timing was what it was. Uh, it's During that, it's been incredibly politicized. If you don't understand if you haven't seen that, you don't feel that way, then that's, you know, that's a whole other problem for you. And I'm <laughs> praying for you. Um, but it's been incredibly politicized. So you've got the the Democrats, obviously, in general, almost sweeping for and advocating for Obamacare and standing on that hill uh, initially. And you had the GOP and the Republican side saying, this is the worst thing ever. We're going to all die. Um, and then it, it, it ramped, it only ramped up on the on the right, I would argue, over those eight years. Um, it ramped up on the right into more animosity, right. which is interesting. And then, oddly enough, from my industry, um, in terms of saying, "Hey, this like I, I, we're the experts. We're the ones putting it in place in businesses and helping people through all the all the chaos and the mess." And so we're dealing with the issues. And so I've, I hands on see the issues and the problems. And we have lobbyists who go in and say, "Hey, you know, po- politicians, this is the stuff that's not working. We've got to change this." So I'm, what's the good stuff? The good stuff is at, at the end of the day, there's people who wanted coverage could not afford coverage, and it led to all kinds of financial bondage for them. I mean, if you're going to the doctor, you can't afford to go to the doctor, and you've got to be on, say, dialysis, but they can't refuse you for care. So you go get care, then you get an $8,000 bill, you can't pay it. it you're, you're constantly, you're constantly yeah. in trashed credit yep. and possibly you know, bankruptcy. Right. Uh, just You can't do anything Let to get out of it. Let me ask you this, Nathan. Do you think medical collections and James and Kyle should even be on your credit report? Right. I argue that medical collection is not the same as signing a mortgage note, a car note, an unsecured credit card note. I don't believe medical collection should ever show up on somebody's credit report. I know they've been talking about this for years right. in Congress, but I really believe, even as a Christian conservative, that if anybody has to go to the hospital, make a decision whether their kid's going to live or die right. or their, or their bride, their credit. it shouldn't affect their credit. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I think that that's a, an approach that needs to be... Um, something that has been explored seems like there's some traction there it hasn't changed so because that didn't get changed as part of healthcare reform that wasn't part of it which i would again one of those things i would say would, would make sense um but it, people either way have so much debt whether it's affects their actual score or not right if they've got outstanding debt and creditors because they owe money you know there's costs to that care and that's that's part of the challenge so anyways i would say the good some of the good is that people who wanted care couldn't afford care got care got access to care um, in, in a way that maybe goes to the insurance, which is better overall to have some sort of layer in there. Now, I, I, this is so that's the good. I would say there's better ways to have done it than the way that it was done, where it's affecting everybody else's rates, the way that it's affecting them. The amount of money that was dumped into this thing, which was initially projected at a trillion, last I saw was something like $2.3 trillion has gone into or is remaining to go into Obamacare. That's, that's funny money. Like we don't, you know, we don't understand $2.3 trillion. Right. That's, that's funny money. Um, and so it, it, the amount of money that was spent to do the do it the way it was done, uh, part of that is is unfortunately fuel uh, funding political interests, and, right. and that's all tied in there. It is political. There are political components that you have. And the uh, fact that it's called Obamacare. Sure. Yeah. yeah right. It, in theory, it's not. It's not. It's, but, it's patient right. protection and uh, affordable but, care. But, but since everybody's nickname it that, including yeah, Obama, and he's happy to yeah, call that. Yeah. Sure. Right. And it's a it's a staple that's become sort of a a place of a badge of pride for the democratic party. Right. But they were, I would say that they were starting to listen to, we got to fix this because it was, and honestly, because it was affecting them. Politicians are in the business of getting votes. And so if they, if they feel like something they've put in place is causing them to lose votes, they want to change it. And so we were actually gaining traction on saying some of this stuff's wrong and broken. You got to fix that. And they were listening because it was starting to hurt their campaign odds. Well, we saw that come to fruition. And now there's been a switch in, in terms of control. And the, it's the, 
frustrating thing is this. The, the platform that so many Republicans ran on to get elected was on the repeal and replace language. Okay. So now in order to satisfy their supporters, they have to do it. Right. They have to repeal they and replace. They have to repeal and replace. So if you, Nathan, are mm-hmm. in charge, if mm-hmm. you if Trump comes down mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, and, and says, I'm going to appoint you and somehow yeah. we get you through the Congress, yeah. right? Yeah. What would you recommend on this on this you know replacement yeah. what what should we do i mean you're the insurance yeah. guy when yeah. it comes to medical insurance yeah yeah so, so however i'm not a politician um <laughs> and so Thank the, God, the right? challenge the challenge is that i look at it there's a system in place that requires certain percentages of votes to do different things depending on the kind of language you use and so that's the hang up is there's so mm. much of this that's financial there's so much of this that's policy and those take two different kinds of votes and so there's, how do you intersect the right pieces? All right, I, let's take the yeah. vote out. Yeah. Well, what oh. should we have? No vote. Don't worry about it. I would love to see, I would love to see a couple of different things. One is um, a, a better system for the people who, because they are uh, sick and need expensive treatment and can't afford it and can't afford it. I would love to see better forms of high risk pools, high risk pools for people who need that kind of care, because then their rates don't drastically affect everyone else and we've mm. got a nut look we have enough fees and and things get going into the system and the carriers have have expressed a willingness to partially take a portion to fund some of that stuff and there's a lot of pools that'll go to that because it's good for a lot of people um so to create some better high-risk pools and the, and the republican party to their credit is having those conversations however the the, the crazier thing is that we're having trouble getting them to just fix the things that need to get fixed because it doesn't splash enough it's right. not enough of the language that they need from the poli- from a political standpoint to say we repealed well you, what there's some stuff that's that's working right get get out some of the political interest and don't infuse it with your own <laughs> good luck getting them not to infuse right. it with their own truly political interest. clear the swamp yeah it's yeah. tough man and so I, I i get the dilemma that they're in um and the system unfortunately the systemic problem here is that the, the system pro- it kind of pro- perpetuates the problem because okay. you got to get votes. Let yeah. me ask you this as a U.S. citizen. I know, yeah. I know you are and I am. How do you know? Is it our right? Right. I don't know for certain, yeah. but yeah. I, I assume. <laughs> is it our right that we should have medical insurance, medical coverage? Yeah. So that's, Cause that's so, a big, that's a, hu- a big question. human right, like a basic fundamental constitutional right. Well, you got to change the constitution. But the, if you have it in there, pursuit of in terms of life as a component to what we're talking about, medical, the medical industry and there's uh, this is a whole other pol- political route we're not going to go down but the medical <laughs> industry hole. should should exist to perpetuate and sustain life right and so I get you. to to have those two i think there is an intersection there that's valuable um the question is how do you pay for it and so i think that there's ways to because uh, it costs money and there's good competition there's bad competition because some competition actually drives up costs right in our, i mean do in you think do you think the medical professionals of themselves should mm-hmm. should do it kind of like uh like, what's an attorney when they do it free for somebody? They go help Pro out. Bono. Yeah. Don't, no, 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 no. You don't no, think that's no, possible? It's an industry. No, no. It's, no, a, it's okay. a specialized, Well, you're in the area. I don't know. I'm just industry. I, I want my doctors. I want my doctors to have to learn more and be pushed to do better and the technology to be encouraged to improve so that we're not in a situation like Canada where there's one location for, for, for specialty cancer treatment in the middle of the country. So if you live coastal, you've got to disrupt your entire life to get cancer treatment. We've got mm. this, this specific facility I'm talking about. We've got five in Southern California. I have access to care that I love and we, and we value that, right? Well, the value of that comes in the form of the cost of care. And, and so that's where we place our ultimate value on it. I'm not using cancer treatment right now, but I have people that I love that are, and I'm thankful that they're not being disrupted and sent to Kansas to get it taken care of because there would be in Kansas. And I love them too much for that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now I, I get your point. I, I get your point. I, I can understand the way Canada, in order for it to happen, they had to do it that yeah. way. Yeah. And if you have that horrible disease, then you just have to, you, you know, your life is going to change and maybe that's why they're doing it. I yeah. can understand their side of it financially, Yeah. but emotionally, it throws off the whole family, throws them off, right. and I understand both sides the on that. The biggest so. thing is this. If we go to social, any kind of socialized medicine or single-payer system, the cost of beer goes way up, and mm-hmm. I'm not on board with that. Oh, you like your beer? What? You like your beer? Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You what? Know. What? Yeah. So that's we just can't have that. There's a lot of health benefits to drinking beer, by the way. Darn right there is. Yeah, there is. I just can't if think you're of breastfeeding, If you're breastfeeding, it lets down. That's yes. a term, technical term. 
Um, and uh, that's important. Oh, also, also, my wife actually drank mm-hmm. wheat beer. True story. During her period of breastfeeding, and it would help her with production. Wow, yep. it's a true story. Fact. Also, if you uh, if you drink less than or take basically if you take an hour a day to relax, and a lot of times that comes in the form of maybe you're smoking a cigar or drinking beer or having a cocktail, something like that. It's shown that you have a point two percent or two point two years longer life expectancy. Uh, than people who don't. And it's more a pattern of rest than it is about beer, but everything in moderation can yeah. be good. Was that where we're going with this? Is that so yeah, we're on a beer we got, segment? Yeah, now. we somehow this got is now a beer. beer segment. Yeah. yeah. I, I wish that we had some beer in studio. Yeah, at 10 a.m. You have to be an alcoholic yes. to do that. Yeah, it would be good. It'd be good to have some beer right now. You guys are crazy, man. You love us, Jason. I just see the negative impacts, I guess, of people who take it out of control. And I know you said you have to do it in there, but being raised by an alcoholic, having a grandfather who's an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. I see all the negative impacts. Yeah. And as a kid here in San Diego, I had to go through Al-Anon, Alateen, all the things I did mm. not want to go to. But I'm thankful that I went to these so that I learned, hey, if you have an addict personality or have a mm. DNA that possibly is, mm-hmm. you know, that could, you yeah. know, affect so avoid, could affect yeah, me, avoid it. So the self-control, right? That's the reason why I've never been drunk. 47 years old, never been drunk. Fist bump. Fist bump. Fist bump. Moderation. You may have to get drunk, though, to watch a Los Angeles Chargers game. I would. I probably would. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, we're going to head to a break. But if you want to get connected, Nathan Craig with 3C Insurance Services, as you guys can tell, just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the insurance industry. One of the few guys in the world who's actually explained it to me to where it makes sense. He helps set our office up with our insurance policies for our employees. Love the guy. If you want to get connected, 619-663-SELL, 619-663-7355. We're going to head to a break. we got a special guest calling in from Orange County, my buddy Jesse, that runs callaction.co. He's going to drop some knowledge on us on what home buyers are looking for in 2017. You are listening to Whistle Wednesdays. We'll be right back. 